Right. Thank you for having me. Um, so, as Stella said, I work for Historic England. Um, my role um, for Historic England is as a specialist in analytical earthwork survey, but I've be become involved in the Dunstable High Street Heritage Action Zone because I'm the project manager for the rese research work that Historic England have been taking, undertaking as part of the High Street has. Um, I'm sure most of you know where Dunstable is, but for those of you that don't, it is 30 miles northwest of London in central Bedfordshire. It's got a population of about 36,000, and it's just west of its larger neighbour, Luton, at the northern end of the Chiltern Ridge. Um, just a little bit of background about the history of Dunstable. Um, it is relevant to the High Street has, so just to, to, to fill you in. So it's, um, it's, got, it's located on the crossing point of two ancient routeways, Watling Street and the Icknield Way. And this is really important in terms of the town's development. Um, a Roman settlement developed at this crossroads known as Durocobrevis. So, um, that might not be exactly the way you pronounce it. Um, and then um, in the post-Roman period, there's... Um, less evidence for exactly how the town um, was occupied. Um, it was probably much more dispersed occupation. So um, Henry I comes along in the very early 1100s and um, essentially founds a new town, um, encouraging peop interested people to come and set up businesses and rent, rent land there. The Priory is founded not long, long after and certainly by the 1130s, and Henry gives control of the town and the market to the Priory. And then the Priory goes on to really dominate the town until dissolution, um, after which Dunstable continues as a flourishing market town until its prosperity started to decline in the 19th century as nearby Luton grew. So, the High Street Heritage Action Zone project. Um, you've already heard mention of, of these schemes. There are 68 schemes across England. And as part of this scheme, Dunstable has received just over one million pounds from government via Historic England. Um, the project works in partnership with Dunstable Town Council. They're the main partner. And the, real, the aim of it, fundamentally, is to breathe life back into the historic core of, Dun of Dunstable, uh, particularly focused on an area known as High Street South. Um, it aims to tackle vacant properties and those in poor repair, um, and to do this through physical interventions such as repairs to historic shop fronts and works on public realm, um, but also through a large active cultural programme and through community engagement, and this is a real key element of the Heritage Action Zone project in Dunstable. And I don't have a pointer, but the car, <laughs> the car area is this, this area here. This is called Middle Row. It's an area of market infill. And that, it's this kind of stretch here, High Street South. So it, uh, for the High Street itself, it's actually only a very small area. Um, It's involving, you know, as I said, um, various types of shop, shop front repairs and building repairs, and these have only really just started to get going in earnest, really. This is one of the first buildings um, which has been vacant for many years and is having repairs to the roof to make it watertight and hopefully bring it back into uh, sustainable reuse. But really, in terms of the priory, what's really key is that if you see on this photograph here, um, the Priory, um, Priory Gardens were included in the High Street Heritage Action Zone scheme, really because the history of the High Street and the Priory are absolutely intertwined. Um, you know, obviously, the presence of the Priory is important for the development of the town, and High Street South forms the western side of what would have been the outer precinct. Um, the... Um, Priory Gardens scheduling, um, so uh, the list entry 
is in need of update. It's an old county number, so um, it, it, it really um, warrants more, more information in that, in that record. And really key to the town, access from High, High Street South to Church Street um, is provided by Priory Gardens. So it's a key green space right in the heart of the town, right next to High Street South. Um, so um, another reason why the Priory and the High Street has area are so intimately intertwined is that one of the key buildings on High Street South that's a key um, focus of um, repair works is Priory House. Now the 18th century uh, facade, the 18th century building hides a rare um, near complete survival of a small early 13th century stone undercroft with a hall above. Um, it's very, very likely to have been related to the Priory because it's, it's on or near the precinct boundary. Um, this is the focus of um, various repairs um, aimed at removing the building from the Heritage at Risk Register which have been undertaken by Conservation Architects and the Morton Partnership. And also key to the way that it kind of links the high street and the kind of activities in Priory Gardens together, it's also council own, owned and has an exhibition space and, you know, really, really makes that link even more strongly between the high street south and the Priory. Okay. So, I guess... Um, it's almost like you couldn't really do a sort of action zone scheme on that little bit of the high street without taking into account the Priory. You know, you'd be kind of missing an incredibly good opportunity if that wasn't part of the, part of the project, essentially. Um, the Priory, Priory Gardens and Dunstable's medieval past already makes a huge contribution to how people value their town and their high street. Um, and it was really important that the Heritage Action Zone scheme really built on this connection. So what have we been doing in Dunstable? So it was a really great opportunity for us to do a little bit more um, research um, in Priory Gardens. There's actually been quite a lot of work done in the past by the local archaeological society, the Mansard Archaeological Society, which is sadly now... Um, disbanded, um, but there's been a lot of um, small-scale um, interventions and also some resistivity survey done in, in the past, and it's, um, it's important to say that any work we've done has kind of really built on that and is really drawing on that to, um, 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 in our sort of conclusions. So we undertook survey in um, May 2021. Um, we did analytical earthwork survey of the um, earthworks in Priory Gardens. That's myself and my colleagues, Becca Pullen and Matt Bristow, who's pictured here. And um, my colleagues in the HEG Geophysics team, Neil Linford and Andy Payne, also undertook ground penetrating radar survey um, of Priory Gardens and Priory Middle School playing fields, which are to the south of the Priory. Um, and this was really to try and see where we could add to the story and really to ensure that we knew as much as possible about the buried remains of the Priory and how they're connected to the High Street and to Priory House. Um, we, um, colleagues also undertook um, an aerial photographic assessment and we've done various bits of doc documentary research. So this is the GPR, results of the GPR survey. So the sort of write-up of the research work's ongoing, but it's, um, the work's re revealed some interesting initial results that add to the story and, and, and sort of enhance what we already knew from the Man's Head Society's um, resistivity survey. Um, one particular um, sort of exciting feature is the um, discovery of um, an upsidal end on the church. So the existing parish church is just the nerve of what would have been the larger priory church um, so that you can sort of see the curving uh, upsidal I've got a pointer curving upsidal end of the church and um, the church is obviously this building here 
Um, and um, we've picked up um, quite a lot of other little details. It suggests it had some sort of ambulatory or walkway leading to the Lady Chapel, which is another really important um, um, location in terms of Dunstable's sense of place. So it was the Lady Chapel in Dunstable where the court sat that annulled Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon. So it, and, and that's really another thing that's really embedded in how people really understand their history and heritage in Dunstable. Um, that report is now available online, but will also be combined with other work that's been done. So we'll combine you know, the information from earlier work and the GPR and the Earthwork Survey and we'll really add to what we know about the whole area of the Priory. Uh, this is the interim plan of the Earthwork Survey and I think what's been really interesting about this is it's very much pitched as the buried, the buried, the Priory Gardens have got this buried information, this buried history, this secret history and it's going to be really nice to be able to say, no, you know, it's here, you can see you can see bits of um, buildings and things in these lumps and bumps on the surface and that's, that's um, quite enjoyable to be able to try and um, reveal that to people and give, give them access to that. So there's clear benefits of this extra knowledge in management terms and it's going to allow an update of the OCN schedule entry. But it's also really feeding into the uh, cultural programme and the community engagement that's going on as part of the HAS and really that sense of building on that pride of place and this really key, really interesting site that's right on the high street and right um, fundamental to the, to the town. So COVID has limited some of the outreach work we would have liked to do. But we're having um, an event actually this Saturday which will present the, um, some of the new findings and bring together other experts and um, people in the local community with, um, uh, with expertise and knowledge about the Priory to really, um, there's a seminar, there's little tours going on and a stone, a stone workshop which has been run by Jackie Hall who's been doing work on the stone in the Priory House under Croft and on the church. Um, and also, clearly, it will feed into um, in interpretation and understandings of the Priory and Priory House and Priory Gardens in future years. Um, again, building that sense of place and hopefully encouraging further archaeological research and making that point, you know, there's always something to add to the story. And this is... Um, Michelle Collings, who is the um, coordinator for Dunstable Town Council for the Has High Street Has, um, and it's some of the exhi um, new exhibition um, information that's been put into Priory House. So this is the Festival of Archaeology event that was. Um, Stella mentioned as well. I think what's really interesting about this Festival of Archaeology event is because Priory Gardens is absolutely in the heart of the town and the event happened in the heart of the town, um, it's really good actually for engaging people who might not actually go and seek out a kind of um, a particular heritage event because people are just walking through. They're walking through from the car park to the shops or from the shops to the car park or the car park to the doctor's surgery. It's absolutely on that kind of, it's got that footfall already. So that's, that's great in terms of reaching out to people. Um, there was really great local interest. People were really, really interested in the GPR results that really sparked people's interest and imagination. And we had sort of children trying to uh, mark up what they thought they could see on the laminated GPR and things. But it's also a great event that was supported by a massive range of other people and other local history groups, Dun Historical Dunstable, the Dunstable and District Local History Society, the Friends of Priory House and Gardens, and there were other archaeologists there, Albion Archaeology, Coin Specialists, Flint Knappers, a real kind of sense of um, pride and interest in heritage and um, particularly in interest in Priory Gardens. Um, just connecting also to something that Stella's already um, mentioned, um, my colleague Jonathan Last has got a poster at the end of this session about connecting with um, sort of deep archaeology in Ramsgate. Um, he, he also did a little bit of work connecting this type of 
archaeology to the high street has in Dunstable. So in this case, Paleolithic archaeology, um, focusing on Worthington George Smith, who I don't know if some of you will have come across, who is um, a Victorian polymath who actually lived on High Street South, just south of the Heritage Action Zone, um, and was really um, instrumental in recording Paleolithic stone tools that he found on the brick earths at Caddington near Dunstable. Um, now many of which have been removed, so we wouldn't have known anything about um, this, this bit of archaeology about Dunstable without his work. So it's it really making you know, connections with other types of history and heritage and archaeology as well. So the Priory is really taken, um, and the remains of the Priory and the Priory Church have really taken centre stage in the cultural programmes, the cultural programme that's been ongoing in Dunstable. So this has been run by Bed Bedfordshire Rural Communities Charity. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that they're going to do is um, a kind of project called They Came to the Crossroads, which um, is about... Um, how you know Dunstable developed and looking about looking at how incomers have shaped the town and this is um, an effort to sort of ad address and engage with um, what is now a really diverse community in Dunstable um, and is interesting because um, it's going to gather stories um, which will be placed at locations in the heart of the town um, and to me that again it connects to the Priory because we have quite a lot of information about um, the incomers that came to the Priory um, because of the published annals of the Priory that tells you about um, the 13th and 14th century in Dunstable and the people who were visiting the Priory and going off to other parts, you know, to Europe. Um, it's, it's a very interesting connection. They're also going to do um, high street talking plaques, which comes back to a question I think we had earlier about the QR codes, um, which are going to be 15 plaques, which are going to enable um, people to scan the codes and listen to some of the stories. Um, these um, images actually are from a, a winter art competition. So there's going to be a Dunstable art trail in shop windows um, annually. Um, and what interested me about this was the number of entries that actually um, took the, the Priory Gardens or the Priory Church as, as inspiration for the art. Um, and um, another community group has actually produced a tapestry based on the layout of the, um, of the Priory itself. Um, there's also been sketching workshops, so these have been run, out, um, run from Priory House. But again, um, often the Priory itself has been the inspiration for some of, some of the work. Um, and finally, I just wanted to put this slide up. Um, I thought it kind of underlined just how important this, this, uh, this site is, the Priory and the Priory Gardens are to the sense of place in Dunstable. Obviously, the Facebook poll is only a poll of people who are on the High Street Heritage Action Zone Facebook page, so it's not you know, uh, necessarily a representative sample, but of all the options in terms of which part of Dunstable's history means the most to you, the top one has been medieval, Henry I and... Um, Henry VIII, which are all the things that connect the priory, connect to the priory, um, and um, one of the things that they're going to do is um, they've got these wood carving, um, this wood carving trail. They're having these live wood carvings, and they're going to be placed around the town. Um, again, just underlining that um, sense of the importance of the priory to the town. Um, I think that's it. <laughs>